It's good to be uh, with the family of faith tonight. You know, I always, I'm always excited about church. You know that I just, I, I, I live, breathe, and eat as church. Amen. It's, it's to me one of the greatest moments uh, in church living, in church fellowship. Because, you know, the Bible says whether two or three of us come together, that whatever we touch upon or agree upon, it'll be given to us of the Father. There's strength when we come together. And then more importantly, I say there's probably no, no better no better word you're going to hear this week, and I know you probably had many conversations uh, last night, today, if you've been in a workplace or at a job or at home, you've probably had lots of conversations, but there's no better conversation than the one we're going to have tonight because we're going to, we're going to begin to influence ourselves with the mind of God. I can think of nothing better than that. And I spend uh, most of my days uh, positioned in such a way that uh, when I come on a Wednesday night, I'm going to impart to you the, the things that God gave me that I know are going to help you. And the more that we share, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. Somebody say hallelujah. Man, all we got to do is just, you know, get up next to each other and we'll get some sparks going. And that's just enough for us to see uh, the fire get started here at Harvest Point. So let's do this tonight. We're going to get into some good stuff and we're going to uh, take our conversation that we had last Wednesday night a little further. And so let's do this. Let's pray and then we'll jump in tonight. Let's just ask the Lord to still our minds. I don't know if you came in rushed or tired or maybe there's things pressing you, things that are going on about you. We'll just ask the Lord to help us to, Holy Spirit, to put those things aside, right? Father, we thank you for this time that we have. That Father, that we, we have a, a wonderful opportunity to glean from you, to understand you, to know you better. And Holy Spirit, I know that it's your heart, your mind in us to bring us up to that place, that point of, of conversation, or this intimate uh, relationship that we share with God that we might take from him, that we might partake with him. And even if Jesus said, if any man hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and I'll sup with him. And, and we're looking for that divine conversation. We're looking for that divine meal that produces in us an ability uh, to do and work the things of God. And so, Holy Spirit, we, we, we need your help so desperately. Uh, we need your help in every manner of thinking and thought and ability for anything that we would put our hands to or begin to move in motion with our feet, we pray that we be sent of the Lord walking circumspectly with God. And so we pray your help and your strength, the Holy Spirit, moving us over the next 35 minutes, 40 minutes as we delve into the word of the Lord. And so we pray blessing, help, and strength. And we pray it tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's do this. Uh, open your Bible, Ephesians 5. I know when we got into some conversations uh, we're, we're in a series that, brother and sister, if you'll let me say this to you, if you really lay into this series, you're going to leave out of here with the heart of God. Now, I'm not going to tell you it's going to happen instamatically. I'm going to tell you it's going to happen because you're applying yourself to it. And so tonight we've got some conversations that I believe are going to be instrumental in helping you get the heartbeat of the Lord. Amen. And so uh, let's do this. I, I, I want to lay down maybe a, I, I want to, I, I always like to lay down a foundational scripture. I know we got into many scriptures last, last uh, Wednesday night. Of course, Sunday night, uh, if, if you tuned in on Sunday night, uh, Pastor Josh was on with me. Uh, we talked about uh, his deliverance from COVID. And then uh, my aunt and uncle from uh, now from Tennessee, originally from San Jose, but now living in Tennessee, uh, uh, my uncle Johnny, Pastor Uncle uh, Pastor Johnny Martinez, he spoke and and shared a word about how God moved over him. Amen. Amen. Uh, through an act of prayer. I hope you catch that. While we were in the show, Monica Vasquez, you know Monica, she said, "Hey, pray for me because I lost my taste. She's been going through COVID. So I don't, I can't taste a thing." And right there over the right there over the the the, the screen, you know, the television, the the camera. I, you heard the prayer, right? I rebuked the enemy. Very next morning, she sends me a message. Pastor, my taste buds are back. She said, I, I made the best breakfast. She said, I was eating. Uh, I said, share a post, and then I'll share it on my timeline. The way the people of God will see that you can get the heartbeat of God. Right? That, that you too, you too can have compassion on people. You, you, you know what I say? How many know it's so, how many remember the scriptures where, the Bible says, in fact, uh, I, I, I'll just give you the text. St. <laughs> John 6. St. John 6, the Bible says that when Jesus was teaching, he got into the evening tide, right? And he, he felt compassion for the people that, because, you know, he said, man, they've been with me all along. They haven't eaten. 
And he wanted to feed them, right? And how many know that it just takes that heartbeat to just have some compassion? To say, you know what, somebody, you know, I said it on Sunday morning that when, you know, when Jesus taught uh, uh, in St. Luke 14, uh, where he was at a table eating with the chief Pharisee, and there was a man sick of the dropsy. Everybody's eating, but that man is sick. And you would think somebody, you know, how many know it's kind of hard to eat when people are sick next to you, right? You're eating and they're, they, they're all, you know, you're like, oh my, it messes up your meal. You know, you almost can't eat. Oh, you know, if you have compassion, you would, you would say, sir, can I help you? And so if we get the heartbeat of God, what we live here with is the ability to help people. Let me say amen to that. Listen, if your Christian faith is nothing but about you, you're not in faith yet. My faith is to help you. My faith is for you. And I pray that, that the day that you need it, I'm going to be ready for you. When I need to point my finger, when I need to give you a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge or something prophetic, I pray that my life be in such a way that I can be used of the Lord. Somebody say amen to that. So I'm talking about the heartbeat of God, right? Having the heartbeat of the master. Ephesians 5, I wanted to give this kind of, it's kind of a long text, but I just want to get down to verse 17, but I'm going to read it as a whole because I think if we read it as a whole, when we get down to verse 17, you'll say, aha, that's what you're talking about, preacher. I got it. So watch this. This is Ephesians 5, 8. And this is our, this is our foundational text for the whole series. We'll allude to it from time to time. But, but, but look what it says here. For ye were, for ye were sometimes darkness. Oh, I would say all the time if you ask me. For ye were sometimes darkness. But now are ye light in the Lord. How many know that ye are the light of the world? Right? I've been sent to bring the light of God. Man, listen, and I'm doing it. I, and I love to do it. It says, but now are ye light in the Lord. Look what it says. Walk as children of the light. Somebody say glory. Man, that's, when I tell you you've been sent, man, that's the best message you're probably going to hear in the next 25 years of your life. If you embrace the idea you've been sent, you can get on with the will of God. For the fruit of the Spirit is in what? Man, you got to lay hold of that. The fruit of the Spirit is in what? All goodness. Ariana, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that the Lord sent me to meet you in that room on Sunday? Aren't you glad? I told you the story, Ronnie, I ministered, I ministered uh, the idea of being sent, right? The Lord sent me into a room, and I was, a li I was the light of God in goodness to you in that room. That's how it works, brothers and sisters. Listen, we have the ability to help people, and we've got to get on with the business of God. You say, well, preacher, what's the business of God? The fruit of the Spirit in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Right? And you got that semicolon. It looks like a smiley face with a little teardrop. Hallelujah. <laughs> Proving it is what? What is acceptable unto the Lord. And we're going to be talking about that on Sunday because we're going to be, uh, you know, it's time for the fire to fall. Wouldn't you say that? It's time for the fire to fall. And I'm going to show you how Elijah caused fire to fall on Sunday. Man, he's an awesome man of God, Elijah. Prophet of, in the first rank, right? And it says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Watch this. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Somebody say, hello, Jerry Springer. <laughs> but all things that are reproved are made manifest, what? By the light. Remember I told you that sometimes when you're doing the will of the Lord, you might have to say things to people that they don't want to hear but you'll never love them as much as you hate them in Christ Jesus. Y'all better hear that. I can love you out of my own love, but you know what? You're going to come to hate me eventually because my love is self-seeking. But if I can love you in the hate of Christ, you'll never be loved as much as that love can be. Somebody say amen to that. That's a man. If you lay hold of that, you you're growing up. I mean, that's a hard message to hear because we want to be people pleasers. But God says you can't be a people pleaser and be a God pleaser at the same time. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepeth. That's me. I had to wake up. Arise from the dead. That's me. I had to get up out of the dead. And Christ shall give thee light. 
See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Walk with direction. Walk with purpose, right? Redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. Right there, right there where you see the word evil, I, I, I love giving this, this, I'm in a generation now, you know, I grew up knowing what evil was, but I'm in a generation now that doesn't know what it is. Will you put out to the margin evil and just circle the word and maybe put an arrow and just, just so you, how you know how, how evil it is, the definition of evil is anything that doesn't please God. Now you think about how much evil there is. If, if you understand what it is, what evil is, anything that doesn't please God, just imagine how evil the days are. And then look at verse 17. This is what I wanted to lead up to. It says, wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. You see that? I brought you all that way to bring you to verse 17 because we all need to be there. I need to be there. I need to understand it. You need to understand it. Somebody say amen to that. Uh, I, I say that, that in, in, in some of you that are maturing in your walk with the Lord, that should be all of your prayer life now. I want the will. Do you know that, do you know that whatever you need is, is already manifest in his will? Somebody say hallelujah. Right. Everything you need uh, is manifest in this wheel, right? Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. When, when you get a new car, you don't need four new tires. It's on the vehicle. Come on, somebody. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? Uh, when you get a new car, you don't need a heater. The heater's in the car. What I'm trying to tell you is that if you get the will of God, you get all of that. Yeah, you get the will of God. If you start walking in the wheel, then, then listen, you can let fire fall. Oh, I'm saying something, man. I'm, I'm loaded, man. I'm a loaded weapon, man. I've been in meditation and prayer and fasting and just pressing. I love doing these things. These, it's my delight. Oh, man, somebody. I love doing this. This is not something I do for a living. This is my life in the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're in the heartbeat. So I'm, can I walk you through? We're going to go fast because we already covered some of this stuff. So if, if, if you can speed right, you're going to have to speed right because I ain't going back because I got to get down to something. Y'all ready? So we're in the heartbeat. So we got into the heartbeat series. You saw the heartbeat series. It's already pumping. Somebody say hallelujah. N notice this. So we're going to be making his heart what? Our own. Right? That's the purpose. What is the heart of God? Now, you may want to write this down. If you didn't get this, I'll give you a moment to write this down. This is essential. So we're going to be covering several aspects of this. So, of course, right now, we're going to be talking about his will just for a moment. So we're talking about his will. But we're also going to get to his desires and his purposes. And, of course, we know that the son is the fullness of his heart. Right? Jesus is the fullness of the heart of God. Y'all need listen, if what you don't know about God, if you can read it in the Gospels, you, you can answer whatever question you don't, you don't know about God is answered in the Son. Yeah, and I like that because Jesus walked with us. This is Emmanuel. This isn't God on paper. This is God wearing sandals, walking next to you, right? And so now we know what, what the will of God is, what the heart of God is, because the Son is the fullness of his heart. If you want to know if God wants to do it, see if Jesus did it. And if Jesus did it, then you know the heart of God. Right? Somebody say hallelujah. Man, that's, that's rich. So the heart of God is the essence of who he is, which is his will, right? His desires, his purposes. We're going to get into that. And of course, to, to, to quantify this part, right, he is, is to say I am. Right? How many of you know that God said I am, that I am? I'll always be what I've always been. You know, we could get into, you know, manifestations of that but at the end of the day we're going to be talking about his will his desire and purpose and then we're going to get into the fullness of the heart which is the son amen y'all get that everybody wrote that down that's going to be the heart of the series and we'll get into some of those purposes as soon as we get through with the heart we're going to get over to his desires amen that's going to be awesome do you know god has desires oh we're going to talk about that i hope his desire becomes your desire okay so what is the will of god so i'm going to go fast here we talked about his sovereign will can't be stopped i gave those scripture references there you go we talked about the moral will, that which is already written. How many know there's things already written? We don't got to ask about things that are already written. It's written, stated in his will. We, we covered those uh, last time we met. What is the will of God? And this is where we were getting into. We get into God's specific will. And this is where I think most people have the most trouble with. This is the specific will of God. And this relates particularly to you. So God has a particular will for your life. So my will and Alberto's will, when it comes to specific will, are not the same. I mean, God's specific will for you and his specific will are not the same. So we've got to know what that is, right? Because God has a specific will. How many want to do his will, his particular will in your life? 
yeah, I want his particular will, right? There's wills that we know, the sovereign will. We know God's moral will, but we need to get into the specific will. This is where we, most of us have a little trouble. So let me do this. So I, 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 I wrote down this. God promised to guide us, but it is provisional, right? So I use that as a, as a statement of, like to say, conditionality, right? So there is conditions on doing God's particular will that I want to teach, and that's, that's, the, that's the goal of this particular segment of learning the will of God. So I'm going to get into that, but maybe, I'm not sure if I'll get there tonight, but we'll see how far we can get together. So God's specific will. So right, right I'm going to give you a couple of little thoughts just, just stuff, stuff I'm going to throw at you, not, nothing, how do you say, nothing complicated. I might not even, you know, quote scripture, nothing. I'm just going to give you a couple thoughts uh, about God's specific will. So you can write these down. So God's will is not a road map. And I'm glad that God doesn't tell me everything he's going to do because then you might get scared. So, so how many know that God doesn't give you to know tomorrow? Anybody know that? Anybody know that God doesn't give you to know tomorrow? He, he gives you to know today. So don't, don't be putting your mind on tomorrow. Put your mind right now on today. And so what I say is that what's, what's more beautiful than God giving me a roadmap is that it's relational. So this is all going to happen by relationship, right? What, what God's going to do, his particular will in me is going to be because I'm purposing to have relationship. Relationship. And for anybody that tells you that, that, you know, what do you mean relationship with God? No, God wants a close, intimate relationship with you. Right? And I, and I don't want the people of God, the Harvest Point members, to be robotic. I want you to have a relationship with Jesus. I want you to know why you go to church, why you read your Bible, why you pray. I want it to come out of, out of your heart to do, right? We want it to be relational, right? Somebody say Amen. This is, this is not, it's not, you know, connect the dots. This, this is relational, right? God's will is the root of all good things. It is our joy. I mean, no, uh, the psalmist wrote in Psalms 40, I delight to do thy will, O God. Right? It, it, this is our joy. Listen, when you find the joy, we used to sing that song, when I found the joy of reaching his heart, when my will becomes enthralled in your love, when all things that surround me become shadows in the light of you. This is that song we say, I worship you. I worship you. Uh, when we begin to understand that the joy of our life is found, right, in doing his will, you're starting to walk. You're starting to walk in a way that pleases God, right? Next one. God's will doesn't have to be extravagant. So don't, you, you, you know, I know we, we talk about, you know, Elijah on, you know, Mount Carmel and calling down fire. Sometimes it's just you closing your mouth. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Sometimes the will of God will tap you and say, say nothing. Just learning how to yield. Just yield. Right? How, how, how many know it's beautiful when you find people that can control themselves? How many know the fruit of the Spirit is self-control? Right? Sometimes it's just yielding. Right? I, 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 how many know, I don't, was this the last series, uh, the last series that we were teaching uh, when, when, I, when I was sharing with you how important it is, if you have the gift of tongues, to use that gift? Because the way that you yield to the Spirit in tongues is the same way you yield to the unction of the Spirit of God. The same, the same, the same divine relationship we have in our prayer closets when we're praying and the Spirit of God begins to use is the same way we use that same gift when we're out on the street or, or the Spirit begins to impress. It's yielding, right? It's yielding. Amen. Alvin, are you going to say something? That's what it means to, to give way, to be second. You just yield yourself. Right? You, ever, you ever seen how traffic sometimes merge? You ever get upset with people when they got that yield sign? That yield signs mean you're supposed to slow down, right? You're supposed to let me go through, then you, you find your way in, right? How many get upset when people don't yield? They just come barreling through. Most of us live our life like that with God. We just come barreling through. Mary said, I got a ticket like that one time. Failure to yield the right of way to a police officer. <laughs> 
You know what yield is now, huh? A hundred hundred dollar lesson. Hundred and twenty dollar lesson. Learning how to yield. Sometimes you gotta slow your roll. Hello, somebody. Y y yield, at the, yield at the stop sign and stop at the yield sign. Come on, somebody. My only complaint is stay out of the fast lane. Listen to this. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is the gem in this statement, right? So we get it. God's will is not a roadmap. It's going to be relational. God's will is the root of all good things. It is our joy. Y you know, uh, the reason, let, let me just stop here. I was going to say something here. How many, have ever, how many have ever been praying something and somebody says, well, let God's will be done? And you're like, oh. You ever, you ever felt that? Years ago, I used to get that sensation. And I got along with the Spirit, so I want to get rid of that. Why is it that when, when I'm praying for something and somebody says, well, we pray God's will be done, I felt like what I was praying for and the will of God were two separate things. And I said, I got to get along with God with that because I should be excited to hear God's will be done. When somebody tells you, let God's will be done, just act like they're kissing your face and blessing you and throwing a party. Because when, when the, when the real, will of God shows up, everything good manifests with it. That's what I want. I want the will of God on me. I want everything good to manifest. Somebody say amen. Oh, but th 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 this, this, is, this is my love right here. God's will is not hidden. He guides us. How many believe that God is guiding you? We're going to get into that. That's where, where I believe we're going to find most of our rest tonight. God promised to guide us. So let's look at that. I I'm going to go through these scriptures. We're going to go through every single one of these, right? Somebody say amen to that. We're going to get into these, these scriptures because to me, this is where the church needs to rest. Listen, for somebody said, well, I, you know, I, I, I want to do the will of God, but I don't know what it is. Don't worry. He's going to guide you. Let me say amen to that. Isn't that nice? God said, I'm going to guide you. I, I, I made a statement last Wednesday night, and the Spirit of the Lord brought me to this. And, and, and this is something that's been in, my, been in my heart. Of course, sometimes when I talk to First Lady, I always, you know, I, I talk. And I, anyway, I, I said, God doesn't hide his will. And then, of, of course, you heard, me quote, you heard me quote a passage out of St. Uh, Matthew uh, chapter 7 when I got in the Sermon on the Mount. When, when Jesus says, not everybody that comes to me shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. For many shall come in that last day saying, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name do many wonderful works, right? But I will profess of them, depart from me, right? You, you remember that? Workers of iniquity. I never knew you depart from me, workers of iniquity. I don't have to worry about that. You know why? Because he's going to guide me. Right? If you think that Jesus is saying, listen, if you don't do the will of the Lord, the punishment obviously is hell. But I don't have to worry about that because he's going to guide me. Amen. Right? I always like to quote, what's that beautiful passage? Uh, uh, Romans 8, um, um, Romans 8, 14. Uh, uh, Elder, will you, look, will you look at that? Is that Romans 8, 14? For as many as, for as many as are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. Is that Romans 8, 14? I, I, I kind of lose track sometimes as I'm, it's 14, say 14, I, sometimes I lose track of the verses. Did I get it right, Elder? Yeah. For as many as are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. Yeah. How, how many know there's, there's something inside of you? In fact, let, let me just, let me just, did, did, I, put, did I put up here um, uh, John, no, I didn't. I didn't put John 16. Uh, can I read, can I read your verse? Can I read your verse, church? Man, to just bless you. You've got the guide of all guides. You've got the best guide there ever was. You've got the Holy Spirit. Know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? And the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Look what it says here. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Right? We talk about that yielding, Alvira. That's letting him guide. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Man, I love this stuff. Are, are you there in Exodus 13? Yeah, I, I went over there just for a moment. I don't want to uh, catch you by surprise, but I was, I was thinking about, you know, when I was thinking about, how many know God 
man, this is, I, I've been having such a wonderful time this week. I've been in the scriptures. How many know that? How many know God is love? <laughs> you know, he is love. Not, uh, th you know, love, you know, love is defined. Love finds its, its root in God. Without God, there is no love. Oh, man, hear me. No such thing as agape without the Lord, right? And how many know God is light? God is light, right? We know God is light, right? Revelation. How many know God is fire? The Bible says he is a consuming fire. There you go, elder. He's a consuming fire. I've had such a delight this week just going. I've been going through all the references in the scriptures of the Lord defined by fire because fire is going to fall at harvest point. Because God's going to make us ministers of flames of fire. We just need a couple of us, man. Don't need a lot. How many of you know it only takes one? Remember the little Smokey the Bear thing? Only takes one to start a forest fire. You know what? All we need is one person to start a fire at Harvest Point. Just start the place ablaze, right? Look, look, look at this. So I'm, I'm going to start a few places just to show you that God promised to lead us, right? So Exodus 13. That was a miracle. Exodus 13, look at this, verse 21. I'm just going to show you all the times that just, I'm just going to massage these ideas, these, these precepts through the scriptures that God guides us. You are not alone. God is guiding you. And the Lord, verse 21, went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud <laughs> and led them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Ah, and he took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. He never took it away. Ah, I love that. Isn't that awesome? Let's go to Psalms 23. Anybody know Psalms 23? Very unfamiliar psalm, right? Few people have ever gazed their eyes upon it. Have, have you memorized Psalms 23? Y'all have it memorized, right, where you could just, just whip it out. That's, that, this, should be, this should be a psalm, this should be a psalm uh, that you have just rooted in your memory. It should be a, a very common quotation in your prayer life. We'll read it together. This is Psalms 23. Are y'all there? Look what it says. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Thank you. Right? In other words, I ain't going to have no want. Right? His shepherding. You, 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 know, you know, when they say when, when, when if you got a bad shepherd, the field he takes you to is, isn't sufficient for your appetite. You're going you're gonna to be, be wanting. But David doesn't say that. That said, the Lord is my shepherd. I don't have any wants. Oh, y'all got to hear that. He maketh me to lie down in what? Green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. What did he say? Yo, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Are y'all there? Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou what? Anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. You, 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 know, you know what's so beautiful? This is, I've often said that Psalms 23 is David's resume, right? Do you know that when he's talking about having his head anointed with oil, he's referencing the time that Samuel came and anointed him? Somebody's got to hear that. And, and I love the story when it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, which is the shadow, the, the valley in which he met Goliath. And did he run, did he run away from or run to Goliath? He said, you come to me with the sword and the spear. <laughs> but I come to you in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Man, this is beautiful. He says, I rod in thy step and come, come to me. You prepare a table for me and prince my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. What does he say? My cup runneth over. And then look at that last one. Surely. Goodness. And mercy shall what? Yeah. Yeah. Shall follow me all the days of my life. Do you do you remember do you remember do you remember when and this is taught theologically this is not something I made up this is this is anywhere you want to go look how many know that when Moses saw the Lord he saw the backside of God 
But what did he see when he saw that? What, what's, what do we qualify the backside of God? Goodness. What follows God? Goodness. If he's in front of you. Did you hear what I just said? If God's in front of you, right? What you get is the goodness. If you let God go in front of you. Now, if you get in front of God, you get trouble, stresses, worry, wrinkles. You need medication for your problems. But if you let God go first, oh, guess what happens? You get the same goodness Moses got. Pastor Josh, you back there. What, say it again. How can we have the Lord? That's it. Did you hear that? If you're following, how could you be wanting? And if you're following, how could you ever be in need? Now, now if, if you're in front, how many have ever been in front of God? I've been there. I've done that many a times. Right? And it takes a little while to learn. You get in front of God, you're going to get hurt. Ah, somebody. Look at David. He says, he says uh, surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell, what? Yeah, and that was always his heart. Man, that's a word. Let's check it out. Psalms 31.3. We we're just going to read specific verses the way, rest of the way through. So keep an, keep an eye on the time. 31.3. Y'all see that? Y'all got it? Thank you, Dad. It's Psalms 31, 3. For thou art what? My rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Right? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the mighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Right? You know, surely, right? Come on, somebody. Surely, that's right. Surely you can't be serious. Look, look at 32.8, Psalms 32.8. Y'all there, Psalms 32.8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eyes. Oh, man, somebody say hallelujah. 37.23. Come on. Took his eyes off and what happened, Elder? Stay focused. You know, sadly, they say that the average attention span, the average adult is six minutes. Co college student, I think they say if you've co been in college, College kids can go about 13 to 18 minutes without, they can concentrate that long. But the average, the, uh, some people are less than average. I think there's maybe some people with three minutes. Yeah. They go and all of a sudden, something distracts them. Then something distracts them. Right? How many know it's hard to learn if some, something's constantly interrupting you, right? How many, how many know that your spirit, listen, I want to share this with you. How many know it's the flesh that's weak? See, once, once you get that, once you understand that your flesh is weak, what, once you, that, the spirit drives that home, that, man, listen, you can't concentrate on me. Only your spirit can do that. And when you start learning how to get your spirit moving, man, then the concentration. Listen, I, I tell my wife sometimes I'll go into my prayer closet. I don't know where, the, two hours just, it was like, it was like I was, I went in there and closed the door, sat down, and I looked down, two hours gone. You know why? I was concentrated in the spirit time just shh, I don't know where it went but I was in the spirit yeah that's that's how it works but if I go into the natural oh man I got things to do and you know what my favorite TV show is coming on and, and and oh I gotta go use the restroom and all man listen uh, oh, 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 oh man I, I don't want to forget tomorrow I got work I got it you know you're, you're getting distracted you're in there in the flesh listen listen can, can I so important you hear this. Did you know that your 
Your flesh hates God. Hates God. Hates God. It's enmity towards God. Hatred towards God. Right? But the Bible says, but a spiritual mind is what? Life and peace. A fleshly mind is death. And when you learn to train yourself in the spirit, all this stuff, man, you'll read a passage and it sticks to you like glue. The spirit will be talking to you about stuff. You'll say, wow, amazing. Glory to God. But that's what the spirit of man, that's what the spirit man and woman, the spirit woman can do if we train it. Let me say amen to that. So look, we're, uh, Psalms 37, 23. You've heard this before. The steps of a good man. Oh, here we go. <laughs> the steps of a good man are ordered by who? And he delighted in his way. Yeah, if he's a good man, right? And we know how to make it good. That heart got to be made good, right? That's what the Spirit of the Lord does. How many know that in your new, your new creature has a new heart? Anybody know your new creature has a new heart? Your flesh has a bad heart, so you have a, bad, a heart condition. You're in the flesh. But if you're in the Spirit, the Spirit promised to produce a heart after God. And it, and it I mean, that's what it does. Your heart, your spiritual heart yearns for God. Psalm 73. And how many know you make the choice to be in the spirit or be in the flesh? Look, and I've said it before. I said it, I said it not too long ago. How, how many have ever been in, a, been in an argument and you decided to go to the dark side? <laughs> you, just, you just got fleshly. Anybody ever? You're there and you're listening, and you know that you, you decided, I'm going to go to the flesh on this one. Boom. And you just hit that flip, that that little switch, and yeah, man, you just, and, and your mouth, you just said, Lord, close your ears. Lord, turn away for a moment. And the things that came out of your mouth, the things that you said, how easy your flesh operates there. How easy it just flows in vulgarity, <laughs> flows in violence. You, 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 ever, you ever seen people, you say, man, I never thought that person would have, did that I was so shocked. I'm saying, why are you shocked? That's what the flesh does. I'm not shocked by anybody that's in their flesh. They're capable of anything. You know, I mean, all of us, right? Because how many know that's what the flesh does, right? Let me say hallelujah. How many? How many have ever? How many would ever want to? I, I was I was watching a uh, uh, program the other day. That, uh, how many would ever have a venomous snake in your house? Venomous. I'm not talking about it. people like pet snakes, but I mean a real dangerous one, right? I was, I was watching a guy that, that had cobras in his house on, on the internet. I was thinking, who wants a cobra? So if they call me and they said, hey, did you hear about so-and-so? Cobra bit him. He died. I said, oh. I would be like, oh, poor guy. I mean, he's playing with snakes. I mean, he's a cobra. I mean, yeah, you can't change the nature of the cobra. Every time he looks at you, you look like a, like a Vienna sausage or a little uh, uh, Slim Jim. He's, you look tasty, right? I said, well, you know, I don't, I don't so when, when I hear people fall, it doesn't surprise me, not in the least. If you play with the snake, there's venom in it, right? But when you're in the spirit, it's in, you're incapable of that. The Bible says you walk even above the law of God. You're, you're walking in the newness. Pastor Josh back there has got a snake story. No? Here's a snake. Right? Never. It keeps going. Right? That's why I tell people when people, sometimes people feel entrapped. You ever have an addiction? Right? And, and, and there's a time when that addiction arouses itself in you. There's no way you can resist it. But you know what I'm talking about? It's just, it rises up, whatever that desire, whatever that influence is, whatever narcotic, whatever drug, whatever sexuality. If we allow that thing to rise up, it'll, it'll take you. The idea is to kill it when it's dormant. <laughs> there it goes. That's it. The idea is to get, build, build up your spirit, man, so they can overcome it. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. I said something right there. I helped somebody right there with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quit trying to fight your addiction when it's staring in your face. Wait till it simmers down. 
then apprehend it. Right? It's kind of like you're getting somebody when they're asleep, you can grab them by the neck. Hallelujah. <laughs> Psalm 73, let's jump on this one. Psalm 73, you see the verses 23 and 24. Look what it is. Uh, listen to this. Isn't this beautiful? Uh, man, if, if this isn't relational, I don't know what is. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Just hold the Lord's hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. I'm telling you, he's promised to guide you. Proverbs 3. Everybody knows Proverbs 3. Who can quote Proverbs 3 right now? Anybody jump into it? Somebody please quote me Proverbs 3. I'll start it off for you. Trust in the Lord with all heart and unto but in all thy acknowledge, and he, you see how much Bible you know? You just didn't know it. You got a lot of verses in you, right? So it says, trust in the Lord. This is Proverbs 3, right? Proverbs 3, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thine own understanding. How many know? I've got this underlined and read in my Bible because that's the hard part. Stop trying to understand it. <laughs> That's the hard part. Don't understand it. Don't try to make sense of it. And anybody that's, that opens up a statement with common sense, plug your ears. We're, we're not trying to work by common sense. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him. And what does the Bible say? He shall direct thy paths. Look at Isaiah 58. This, you, you'll recognize this one as soon as you see it. Isaiah 58. Watch this. Once you, once you see it, once, you, once your eyes beheld it, you're going to say, I know that verse too. Yeah, 5811. You've heard this before. These are beautiful. I got a lot of these verses just circled and underlined on Isaiah 58. This is beautiful. Yeah. Who, let, let's take a hand. Who, who watched Sunday night's broadcast? A, a lot of, almost everybody. Almost everybody. Man, I can't hear you. Uh, you, you. You're talking about you can't hear the broadcast or you can't hear my brother? I, I can't hear you. Okay, you got to drop your mask, bro. Yes. They can't hear you. Mom wants to hear you. Right? Right? Right. Barely. She's leaning in with her good ear. Right, right. You, you, how, how many? How many remember that? That the the way that the way that we understand God, the, what makes God extremely unique, is that God declares the end from the beginning. So God finishes before He gets started. Isn't that amazing. That God already finished it, but He'll create your life to work to what He's already finished for you. God, God says, I know the plans I have for you to give you an expected end. Well, how can it be expected? Because he's already finished it. <laughs> and, and he'll give you, the beautiful thing about God is that, I always say this, the reason why, and I really believe this, the reason why we can have a vision or, or a dream is because it's already been established. It's already something that's there, right? So, so the vision is what God has already produced. 
He gives you a little glimpse of how he finished it so that you can get excited. You, that you could, you could kind of co-labor with the things of God. Yeah, go ahead, Elder. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's Psalms. Uh, you're right. That's yeah. We're written. He says, Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in contunance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. And when I wake, I am still with thee. Isn't that amazing? Man, you God, our God is all, my dad is awesome. Isn't that beautiful? Look, you in Psalms 58, 11? Well, well, I think we'll get through these. Check this out. Uh, Isaiah 50, 58, 11. And the Lord shall thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. How many of you ever said she's got thick bones? She's thick bounded. Anybody don't thick bounded? <laughs> That's where that comes right out the Bible. He said, look, I'm not heavy. I just got fat bones. <laughs> Anybody want fat bones? <laughs> I want fat bones. <laughs> the Bible says it's good. I'll take it. <laughs> and make fat thy bones. I love it. I love it. Thick bounded. God will make you thick bounded. And thou shalt be a watered garden. And like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. If you've never read Isaiah 58, can I encourage some of you tonight? Read that chapter, man. That is full of blessing. Let's go to St. John 10. Looks like we'll get through. I've got, I've got two minutes. I think we'll be able to get there. Amen. Yeah, St. John 10. Yeah, St. Saint John, Saint, Saint, Saint John's New Testament. St. John 10. Some of y'all know, how many know St. John 10, 10? Anybody know St. John 10, 10? For the enemy coming forth to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come. Uh, that they might have life and life more money. That's so beautiful. So check this out. So St. John 10, verse, we can start, well, we'll start, I'll read it, verse 1. I'll read it down just a few verses. You'll see, you'll see why it makes sense here. It says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. And that's why I quoted St. John 10, 10, because we know who that is, right? But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Ah, somebody say, you got a shepherd. Yeah, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And the stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Oh, I preached a message like that, don't talk to strangers. Oh, man, stranger danger is right. Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10. So what we're going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to read, I'm going to read Ephesians 2.10, and then, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to talk to you about some of the conditional ways, right, con that, that we can begin to walk a particular will, because I want God's particular will. I'm going to teach you some principles on walking out the particular will. Just from my heart, I'm going to show you how his will, God's particular will, will manifest if you, if you follow the, the provision or the conditions of that walking. Very, and it, they're very easy. Not actually easy, but easy to understand. Uh, maybe more, the application may be uh, more robust, but certainly we can, we can understand it, right? So you in Ephesians 2, verse 10, and we'll finish with this verse tonight. So check this out. Yeah, and this, this was kind of my lead into the next segment, but I, I'll start this on Sunday night. Uh, we'll start right here, Ephesians 2, 10 is what it says. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto what? Good works. Right, because we are talking about the will, 
which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Yeah. So we're going to get into some stuff there. I'm going to get into, I, I think I have like four or five pieces to that conditional guidance. And it is conditional. And I'm going to tell you what those conditions are. We'll get into some of those conversations when we get in on Sunday night. Amen. The following Sunday, I'm planning on having Edward with me. Edward Leha, I'm going to have him uh, call him in and he's going to share. Edward Leha was saved by, by grace. But his salvation story on how God saved him was going to bless you. You need to hear his story. I'm going to, I'm going to talk with Edward. Let him share his testimony, how God saved him. Beautiful testimony. Amen. So hopefully we get him uh, talking here pretty soon. I'm going to bless the family face. So we'll stop right there. Amen. That's good stuff. God's guiding you. Promise to do it. So don't worry. You're going to get to your destination. Amen. Uh, Brother Connor, I see you coming. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage everybody. You, you, you know, sometimes, um, um, sometimes I wish I could just step aside and let the Father talk, tell you how important it is to give. It, you know, the only thing I can do is quote his words. The only thing I can do is quote his words. Uh, uh, in, in fact, uh, Sunday night, when we were talking, finishing up our, our conversation on Sunday night, um, I, I, some, let me read a, a very familiar passage of Scripture. Everybody knows this particular passage. While, while you're getting your offertory ready, it says, Will a man rob God? He says this. In fact, uh, let, let me read verse 7, because they're talking about returning to the Lord. He says, Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But she said, Wherein shall we return? God goes immediately to giving. Look what he says. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But she say, Wherein have we robbed thee? And then the Lord responds and tithe and offerings. And so, you, 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 first of all, let me say this. No man, first of all, you can't rob God of anything. Let me just state that emphatically. You don't rob, God owns everything. <laughs> he owns you. He's bought everything, with, he bought everything by the blood. It's, it's done, right? But, but the, the earth is his and the fullness thereof, right? So there's no way a man can rob God. What we rob God with is his ability to bless you. Did you hear what I just said? We rob God with the ability to bless them. You know, when my kids, when, when, if, if, there were things that I did for them because they did what was right. And then there were times when they didn't do what was right and they limited my ability to bless them. Because if I blessed them, then I'd be reinforcing their poor behavior. It, the Bible says if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. And that's going to be a fact in your life forever. Now, you, you can begrudge that. You can say preacher man's always talking about giving. If you, if you find me to be that sort of man, if you think that I'm the man that preaches for filthy lucre, if, you think, if, if I'm the type of gentleman that you think is serving the Lord because I want to become rich, don't you think I would have left already? I mean, seriously, people. I got a 2008 Chevrolet Tahoe. I got 250,000 miles on it. If you, if you think I'm really, do you think I'm after your money? That's ridiculous. There's a lot of people. I've seen them on TV. There are some people that are unscrupulous. I don't have to point them out. You probably could identify them. But there's a lot of good men and women on God on television and other places that are serving the Lord and need that giving to, to do the work of the ministry. Harvest Point needs all its people giving regularly, giving their tithe and offering. The beautiful thing about it is if I teach you that out of the right spirit, in which I believe I am, that what happens is that you open up a vehicle by which God can bless you back. So now you create a platform for God's blessing back in your life. And I want to see all the people of God blessed. Don't you think I'd want to have a couple millionaires in the church? That'd be nice. So when one of y'all was a millionaire, I'd come say, hey, can I borrow a million bucks? You know, or something, I don't know. How many know if you had a, a billion dollars, you, you'd probably give me a million dollars just because it fell out of your pocket, right? <laughs> That's the change in the cushions of your armchair, right? Be nice to have some rich, rich people, right? Be nice. I'm not, I'm also saying be careful. The Bible says for any man that desires to be rich, they fall into many snares, right? So you got to be careful with money. Jesus said it's, it's, it's much more difficult than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven than a camel to go through the eye of the needle, right? People think, you know, it's threading. No, it's the little gate that a camel would have to train itself to move through. And the walls of Jerusalem, they would have to kind of crawl on their knees. You'd have to bend his knees. That's to be trained. It's difficult, right? 
So you understand that it, it can, not to say it can't be done, but it's difficult. But brothers and sisters, when you give to the Lord, how blessed we become, right? Collectively, we do it together. We're, we're brothers and sisters in faith. My gift goes into the same bag every, every week. My, my giving, which is beyond the tenth, goes into the, into the bag, just as yours does. And, and I believe the Lord manifests in that and blesses me right back. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And the blessings that I'm after, if you could give them to me, then I'd be a man pleaser. The things that I'm after, man can't give me. Yeah, the things that I'm really looking for, only the Lord can give me. And he's done a lot of that already. Yeah, he's done a lot of that already. Y'all want to bless this offering tonight? Listen, let's give. Can we all get in that frame of mind? We're going to give to the Lord. What a blessedness. What a blessedness. Amen. Let's, let, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity. Father, I pray that those that heard my voice watching by stream, those that are here tonight, that I hope they don't, they don't take my words out of, out of context. Or, Father, I pray that they, they hear me out of a sincerity, out of a, out of a richness, Father, of desire to see blessing in them. That, Father, that, 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 that they would see uh, that there's truth in that statement. And, it, and that truth is the very truth that helps us to walk accordingly. And so I just pray, Father, today that those that are beginning to give or learning to give, that Holy Spirit, you just empower that. Let them find a joy in it. Let, Father, it's our delight to give. Uh, we, uh, the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, and that is the absolute truth. What a delight it is to give. Father, we give with a, with a joyfulness, with a heart uh, full of the kingdom and the purposes of the kingdom moving forward. We pray, Father, as you said you would, that you'll rebuke the devourer for our sake. For our sake. Not for your sake, God, but for our sake. That that devourer that would come to rob us, that, Father, he'll find that we're walking in plenty. And so we pray your blessing and your strength with us tonight. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that God rebukes a devourer for your sake? Because God doesn't, it doesn't, for God's sake, come on, somebody. God, there's no way that the enemy can rob the Lord. Come on, somebody. But he does it for you because you create that place of blessing. Amen. Let's do this tonight. Let's pray. It's time to pray. Uh, so, so, of course, y'all, th there are miracles happening, church family. Blessings and power, ability, and we're going to pray for each other tonight. We're going to see the hand of God move here tonight. So if you got a prayer request, just, just kind of indicate. Uh, uh, Miha, go ahead. I do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Good report. Anybody else prayer need? Looking around? Amen. Virgie? I have been asking for prayer for baby clothes and uh, she's been having fever and uh, uh, when I went yesterday and asked yesterday, her fever had broken. She tried me flat. But Amen. The day I checked on her and they said the fever had gone back up. Gone back up. That's right. That's right. Do we have anybody here? Br Brother Cano, do you have, by chance, in your supplies, a napkin? Yeah, yeah, Kleenex. That's perfect. Can, can you bring that Kleenex? And, and uh, Elder, do you got your anointing oil with you? I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Virgie, I'm going to give you this. Uh, can you give a nap? Uh, Brother Cano, just get, get, give that, uh, that, that Kleenex to uh, Sister. Oh, there you go. It's okay if you give it to the elder. Pop, pop that out, elder. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what's going to happen, Virgie. We're going to anoint that prayer napkin with oil. We're going to pray together here. You're going to take that napkin and anoint that baby's head. Because you get to visit, right? You're, you're ex okay, you, you go tomorrow. Touch that baby, and by the end of the day tomorrow, there ain't going to be no more fever. I just how that works. You say, preacher, what are, what, what are you doing? Where, where do you find that in the Bible? Acts chapter 19, you can read it for yourself. Prayer napkins. Point of contact, point of agreement. They take that napkin. person would be anointed with that napkin wherever they were, remote places, wherever. They'd recover just like that. 
The Bible said, if there be any sick among you, let them call the elders of the church. Let them anoint that head with oil and prayer, prayer of faith make a sick person well. That's exactly what it says. That's exactly what God means. That's exactly what God's going to do. That's, that's how it works. I don't, I mean, I'm not, it's not my opinion. That's God's word. He's going he to bring it to pass. So who's got that napkin? Who's got the napkin? Okay, so, so elders, let's get over there. Let's anoint that nap, and we're going to pray, and we're going to see the Lord work on that. So, uh, Elder Castillo. Right? Excellent. Excellent. Let's do it. We're going to pray for James. So, Elder, we'll, you stand in proxy for James. Uh, Elder, uh, will you help Sister Virgie? We're going to pray that. Were, were you, uh, Mary, you got a prayer need tonight? Excellent. Sure. Absolutely. That's why God put y'all there. You're the watchman on the tower. Sure. Wants to discourage you. But the, 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 the problem with that is that you have the power to shut him down. He always does that. But we're, we're attentive to the work of God. Let's do it. So Virgie's right here. If y'all want to jump into that miracle that's going to happen right there, jump in with Sister Virgie. Brother David's playing for a friend by the name of James, a, a co-worker at his job. We're going to see a God's continued blessing on his health and his body. Um, who else? So we, we, uh, Mary's back there. Uh, uh, Elder Rich, you don't mind tying in with, with uh, Mary Galvan and Richard? Uh, Y'all have kids around the same age. And um, what a blessing it is to see the Lord work right there in that circle. We're going to see something really move. If you want to move to some of these places, if, if uh, Ariana's here, and uh, I know she's full of faith because the Lord touched her. So if, if you want her to, you, you, you know what, Adiana, will you pray with Elder Castillo for James, for his physical body? And, and we'll see the Lord move there, amen, and we'll, we'll let everybody pray. Dr. J, how's your tooth doing, man? You doing better? Okay. Gotcha. Come on. You're feeling better. But you're feeling, you're feeling better. Okay. You got a what? Ah, gotcha. Okay. I'm going to be praying for you, Dr. Jim. Okay. Gotcha. Good, good, okay. Yeah, I know where you're at. Okay, that's good. You're going down. Hold on one second, Jay. If, if you're watching by stream tonight, if you am I, am I still on? Am I still live? If you're watching by stream tonight and you got a prayer request, go ahead and write it in the comment section. Both Marty Cardenas and Richard Galvan, they're watching the stream tonight. They're being attentive to it. If you need prayer, because prayer is moving in the house of the Lord and miracles are happening, healings are happening. 
Go ahead and leave your prayer request. We'll pray for you. We're seeing the, the hand of God move. So go ahead and do that. If you have a prayer request. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be praying. Mm. Oh, man. When that happens, call me. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, so I want to thank God right now. Sister Virgie, I want to be the first one to thank God for baby Chloe getting healed. I mean, I just want to thank the Lord for it. Amen. And for James, I want to be the first one to say, Lord, thank you for James uh, being uh, remedied, whatever the issue. For I want to thank God for the Galvan family, Mary's children, all that come together. Thank you, Lord, because it's going to happen. Amen. That awesome? Amen. I think, I think we got to everybody praying. Before I dismiss everybody, Philip, it's good to see you tonight, man. So this is a friend of, a uh, co-worker of uh, the elders, family, uh, Castillo's, and it's nice to have you. He visited with us on Sunday, and then he called and said, what's the address to Bible study tonight? So I said, man, isn't that awesome? We are glad you're here, Philip. We, we appreciate you being here. We're thankful to God to send you our way, amen. Uh, whatever God needs to move in us to move with you, we're on it. We want to do it. Amen. So blessings to you, Philip. Thank you for being with us tonight. Amen. We love having you. Amen. Let me do this. Any ministry announcement we need to make tonight? Anybody needs to share anything on the ministry side? The list for Friendsgiving. Friendsgiving. So everybody needs to get on the list. And I know we're still trying to find a place. So keep going with the list. We'll, we'll get things figured out here soon enough. Amen. before you leave, Dr. Let me tell you what I talked to about here. And uh, but but we need to get that list. Hopefully people 